long time ago, somebody told me, if you can envision what your painting will look like when you're finished, you will have a successful painting. And I had no idea what they were talking about. It's like when you're young and they tell you, just be yourself. You don't know what that means. So I couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't fathom what they meant. Like for me, well, with watercolor, you paint and you don't know what's gonna happen. It's, it's so out of control. So it just takes a lot of brush mileage to get to that point where you can envision what it will look like. And I sent out the painting that we, cause I've done a few of these paintings. So that's what I envision. I envision a, a smooth sky, a little bit darker at the top going to light. And then this um, far away hill, uh, tree line, more purple or bluish color. The one in the middle will be a green hill, um, tree line, darker green, like um, natural green with, uh, and I always put purple highlights in my greens. And then the foreground grass will be yellowish green because warm colors come forward. So then I think, okay, how do I make that happen? So I know that to make a smooth sky, smooth wash, it should be wet into wet. So I have a wash brush. If you don't have one of these, it's really handy because when you put the water down on your paper, it goes on evenly. If you're trying to use just a big round brush, you'll get puddles because you're putting water, more water over here, less over here, but if with the wash brush, it goes smooth across. But the first thing to do is mix your colors. So we don't have to mix all the colors right away. Let's just mix the sky. And you're going to use whatever blue you love the most for your sky. It could be a phthalo blue. I think I'll use phthalo blue. Sometimes I use cobalt blue, but Either one, they, and you could use ultramarine, like they all do something a little bit different. And you'll see I have a lot of trays with all kinds of colors from past paintings. And I just kind of, like here's a green tray. So I use the same ones because there's always some paint left over and I don't like to waste it. So I use the same trays usually. Make a big puddle because you don't want to run out of paint in the middle of your wash and have to stop and quickly make another wa another puddle. So I already had some phthalo blue here. I have phthalo on this side and cobalt on this side. And it's okay if they touch a little bit. I think in this sky, sometimes I put other colors in the sky, but this one's pretty straight blue. Maybe if it's dusk or something, you add a little pink. This is daytime. Yes. Uh, Sharon Peterson wants to know what weight paper you're using. Oh, Arches 140 cold press. And so I'm going to paint all the way down with water down to the top of the sheet. I'm not going to paint the sheet with water because I don't want to. We have one more question for you. Sorry to stop okay. you. All right. <laughs> Do you have it taped um, to a board? Yes, it's masking tape to, it, what I have is a, a old board from a block. So you can see a kind of cardboard foam pour. I'm painting just to the tops of the sheep. We're not gonna put the sky all the way down there, but you don't wanna have a, a line. You wanna have a soft edge to your sky. So it shouldn't be, giant puddles, just glistening. So that's pretty good. It's pretty wet. Maybe it's a little too wet, but that's okay. So now I'll take my biggest brush. I usually only use round brushes and some of them you can see my points are gone, but then I got a few new ones. So I have some good pointing point ones too. Um, 
I'll just take a number 12 and put the sky in. You don't need to see the palette. All right, so it will be darker blue at the top. So I'm just putting a lot of paint on my brush and going back and forth with the strokes from left to right. And then I have that much on. So now I'm going to take just clear water and let it come down because that way it'll be lighter behind the trees. And if it's not dark enough, if it's still wet, you can add more. What you want to be sure of is that your paper and your brush are the same wetness. If your brush is wetter than your paper, you'll get a bloom. And then you can uh, just tip it up and let the paint roll down and take a paper towel and wipe away the edges because if that, if your paper's drying and it's really wet on the side and it comes back in, That'll cause a bloom also. And then there might be some spots like right here. There's a funny point. So I'm going to just take that away. But this will all dry really smooth. It looks streaky now, but it'll be smooth. Whatever's happening here, it's going to be mostly behind the, the tree line anyway. So what I did is just paint pretty much up to that tree line and just let the rest flow down. So the sheep are going to be, you'll need a purple and a blue. I have my painting right over here. That's why I'm looking this way. Um, and you have, the, you have the two pictures of these guys. This is actually one sheep. He was walking around and I kept taking pictures of him at the Sonoma Coast. Um, so the shadow for him is purple, blue, pink, like you can add, put any colors and then his dark brown face will be another brown color, but we'll do this, we'll do the white part of him first. So make a nice, make a purple, a purple that's a little pinker maybe, a blue, if you want to add a little bit of brown into the fur for the shadow, there might be some spots where that would work. If you, if you prefer it not as colorful, you can do, use some gray and gray it down. To make gray, like this one, I use cobalt blue. This is Daniel Smith colors. Cobalt blue and quinacridone burnt scarlet. That makes a brown kind of color. That's this one. And if the more blue you put, the more gray it is, the more scarlet you put, the more brown it is. So that's just what those two colors are right there. So I have, I have that. What I would do is mix everything up ahead of time. So I have all the colors. So I, when I do the, the sheep, I think watercolor is a lot of preparation, more preparation than painting, it seems like. Because, you know, you have to draw your picture out perfectly and plan everything. So I'm just making, I have um, carmine for my red. And I have phthalo blue for my blue. And then I just make a purple. One side will be more red. The other side will be more blue. So I have a whole tray that I can choose from what kind of purple I want to have. And then I have a gray, quinacridone burnt scarlet, and cobalt blue. And the brown, same thing, quinacridone burnt scarlet and cobalt blue. but it's just one has more of the color than the other one does. And then I do have another tray with some pink. So I could do a little spot of pink here and there. 
the pink would be just a little touch in in a, in the wet paint to mingle it together. So I just got I'm getting it wet just so I'll have it ready. You can use a spray bottle to wet everything again too if you want to. I look at my image as I'm painting. Sometimes I really put it right there so I can see what's going on. So uh, this is the shadow of his back leg. And if you notice, these guys are backlit, which is a really great technique to use when you're photographing animals or um, maybe even people, but the backlit makes them really glow. And if the background behind that light is dark enough, it will really pop out. So um, the drawing might be a little confusing. So you have to take a minute to figure out what is going on. And then if you have your, so that's the, the shadow of his white fur. And if you have your brown already ready, you can drop it in the bottom of his leg there and it'll just softly it'll softly uh, merge up. And it doesn't have to be only this bluish purple. It can be another kind of red or purple. So th this guy was just shorn, I guess, that, is that the word? So he has some markings in his fur from being sheared. Maybe that's the word. Then if you're not sure how dark you should get, just fill it in with clean water and you can get darker later if you, if you think, you know, like right there, I wasn't exactly sure yet. So I just, I just cleared, I just put clear water on and same with the top of his head here, but now I'm going to do the top of his head, but I am going to get darker just by dropping in the water underneath, dropping in the paint underneath here. So it's like a little bit of a shadow. I'm using clean, a clean thirsty brush, which means I clean, I cleaned it off in the water and I dried it off on the towel like there. And then I'm going to soften these edges here because this is soft fur. So I don't really want totally hard edges. So I'm just doing a little tiny bit of softening. You can see that. And then I'm going to go around and find like his dark leg right here is brown. And as I do these, I have to think of the grass in front because then I can negative paint. When I do his face, I can negative paint some grass sticking up in front of him. It's a lot of times in watercolor, you have to think of two things at once, what you're painting and what's in front of what you're painting. So now there's a couple little sprigs of grass in front of him that will be like a light yellow color. My brown went into my purple, so I'm just going to lift a little off the top of his head and I can come back to it. And I'm going to leave the top of his ear white for now because the sun is hitting it. And then there's one more leg back here. So the trick is to be sure to leave the sunshine shining on his, on his legs so that they're, they show up as legs. And then he has a dark spot right here. 
it's okay if it spreads a little bit like that. All right, and then that's the first pass, you know, um, there might be, I've got some, I got too much brown in his top of his head, so I'm going to lift some off. Uh, we might go back and make something darker later. Later. Most of the time, if you see something wrong and you don't like it, the best bet is to let it dry and then try to fix it. You can scrub out blooms or anything that's too dark or anything that you think is a mistake later when it's all dry. So don't do it now. Okay, so the same thing with him. I'll start with his back leg. And you know watercolor dries lighter. So that's another thing you get with practice learning how dark you should get on your first pass. If you're trying to do the, you know, the finished product right away for the first time, which is the hardest part, but probably looks the best. That's um, something just to get used to and learn how dark you need to be right away. So that what I just did there was a little bit of brown and a little bit of blue mixed together or purple. And oh, what is happening over here? We have a think. question for you, Samantha. Okay. Um, and the question is, do you expect to add other layers of paint? Yes, I, I can, yes. Um, I probably will. I'll go over him a little bit more to define him. So I have the browns on my brush now. Might as well just do his face. And the same thing when you get down to the grass, you can leave some grass negative painted. I, I do his like his fur in like little sections just because you want to do your brush strokes in the direction of the, the thing that you're painting. So I'm just painting his fur. I don't I want I don't want to touch that. So I'm just leaving a tiny line there, a tiny space, so that I don't it doesn't bleed in. And then like I did the other one, I'm just going lightly here. So I, so I uh, don't get too dark too quick and I can always come back in with some darker color. All right, that's good for now. So we have the shape of the sheep, we have the form of them and at the end, we would go back and add some finishing touches to them. A little darker here or there or whatever. I never added any pink into them, but that's okay. I think normally I would have, I forgot. Now you can touch your sky with the back of your hand. And if it's not cool to the touch and damp, then we could paint. Let's do the far away hill, uh, far away tree line, which is blue or purple, whatever you want it to be, whatever you decide. Like I've done a, a few different pictures like this and sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're purple. Whatever it is, it should be a, a atmospheric perspective, which is a little bit lighter. So it can be a little darker at the top and then lighter at the bottom, the same kind of technique as the sky. So I'm just going to wet the whole tree line with water just up to the top of it. And then, so that's the top of it pretty much. And you don't have to go exactly into everything because when you once you get your color on there and paint it, that's when you'll do that. And then the same way before, just to the top of the sheet. And in you know, down into the 
foreground tree line. But you don't have to worry about getting all the way in. So the glare, you can see the, on the glare how far down I went. I'm going to put some paint down and then decide, oh, is, it, is it too dark? If it feels a little too dark, I can get some water and switch over to water. And at this point, uh, I want to use a, one that has a little better point on it. At this point, these are little trees back here. So I'm going to make some, you know, way distant hill mountain trees. That's what you want to put back there. At least that's what I'm putting. You can have different kind of trees if you don't want these kind. But I'm just doing it with the tip of the brush. And then I might switch to another color that's more bluish. Like I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna uh, not do the same thing across one. So I put add a little pink to my color here. And I, I wanna hurry up because I don't want this to dry before I'm done. I need to leave I need to make sure this stays wet enough. Um, I, I like the, the little sayings that I've learned throughout the year. So um, one artist told us, think of it as like the Revolutionary War soldiers. You want to, they, they all went in a, in a line down the field. And if you had one soldier way out here all by himself, he was gonna, he's gonna die. So you have to keep them together when you're doing a wash so that they all stay alive here. So as, as you can see, it's drying already. So I'm just taking some clean water and bringing it down. I don't need to, this to be too dark. I like this spot where it was a little bit bluer, so I'm going to add a little bit more blue over here to change the color. And then it went up higher over here. And then I'll just bring it down with clear water down here. This, that's because when I get ready to do the green in hill, uh, tree line in front of it, there won't be a line underneath. You, you, can, you can see through. This is like transparent. This is like if you put two pieces of stained glass, one on top of the other, you can see through it. If uh, it dries and it looks just too plain or that it doesn't look like mountain, uh, a forest, you can add a little bit more with negative painting or something. It doesn't have to be the finished product at this moment. So that's the, that's the tree line. And then the next thing while that's drying, you have to go to a different part of the painting that's not touching that. So we'll do the grass. I use quinacridone gold. Um, Hansa yellow is the is the bright yellow. Quinacridone burnt scarlet. And on this big tray, I'm just going to do like a couple different puddles of different colors. They don't have to, they can touch a little bit. Which, if you use phthalo green on its own, it's a terribly harsh, not natural color. So you make a puddle of phthalo green, and then you add quinacridone burnt orange and quinac or and or quinacridone burnt scarlet. And if you don't have those, it's like raw sienna, burnt sienna, those kind of colors to tone it down to make a natural color. And maybe you have sap green or some other already mixed natural color. So sap green is like um, phthalo green and quinacridone or raw sienna already mixed. And what that means is in the rule of watercolor or maybe any painting, you don't really want to mix more than three colors together because it turns to mud. As a general rule, you know, all rules are meant to be broken. 
any rules that I tell you tonight, if you can break them and get away with it, that's a success. My sheep is, still has a little bit of wetness over here. I can see it glistening. But I want this grass to be smooth. So I am going to wet it a little bit first. Just going up to the edge. You don't have to go exactly to the edge of the sheep because when you get there with your color, you'll fill that area in. And I'm just gonna just wet this side for now. I will just put in my color here and I'll put in a little bit and then I'll change it to a more of a yellow because I don't wanna have the same color all the way through. Maybe the next swipe will be a little bit orange. And these, it might, oh, it always looks like brighter colors now than it does at the end because it dries so much lighter. So I'm just making a nice smooth wash of colors. The grass in front of the sheep is lighter, so I didn't get I didn't wet behind him so I can add the little grasses in front of him at this point. It's just this small area, so I'm not going to wet it first. I'm just going to paint through it. And paint this grass in front of that sheep. And I'm just going to go up to the edge of him so I don't leave a, a, short, a hard edge there. So I just went up to the edge and I left that white of his, the, the sunlight shining on his leg. You have to think of so many different things, like you're trying to think of the grass right now, but then you also have to think of the shape of the sheep at the same time. So now it's, I'm not gonna wet it first. It's a short, it's a small enough spot. So this is this small hill behind him. We'll just paint carefully around him. I think if you're, if you're, brush is wet enough with enough paint, enough water um, mixed with paint, you can do wet, dry, wet on dry in a small area and have the same effect. And these um, little grassy spots can be developed after it's dry by putting a shadow behind, like this guy There'll, there'll be a shadow in the grass behind him and also over here, but you can't do it now because it's still, it's still wet. This is so, sort of dry now, so we kind of can make a different, it doesn't even have to be darker, just a different, a little bit of a different color. So it looks like a different plane. So when you're doing this background, you want to make sure that all your background, all your three backgrounds match. You wouldn't want to have this one all orange and this one all green. So you just have to make sure you're looking at what's happening over here so they connect. And then there's just the little bits in between, in between these guys' legs here. Oops. I get so. I'm just mixing a few colors like the, to do the little tiny spots is almost the hardest. You have to try to match your colors. So I have the added um, luxury of being able to look at the screen and seeing my painting as I'm doing it, which is almost like being able to stand up and step back from it. 
So at, at um, any time that you want, feel like you want to do that, definitely stand, step up, stand up and look at it from a little bit of a distance. And also taking a picture of it and looking at it on your phone or holding it in front of the mirror is also good things to do. What that does is give you an overall view because you're right now you're deep down into it and all the little tiny details and if you look at it from afar you get the overall picture of it and that way you see easily the things that might need to be adjusted so now we wait do you like uh painting animals the best or do you have a preference of subject I do. I like animals and flowers the best because you have to paint what you love. If you don't love your subject matter, you don't care and you're not going to try hard and you're not going to finish it and it's just going to sit there and you're going to get frustrated and it's not fun. You know, when you're painting in a workshop or something like this, you have to paint what the artist decides you're painting and really to learn it doesn't matter what you're painting everything is just color it's the elements of design forms shapes shadows colors all those things that make up a painting no matter what the subject matter is so okay so we can mix some greens so when i make green for trees my shadow color is purple and you can also make a dark green shadow color. So I would make a light, a light green tree color, a dark green tree color, and a purple. And you can touch in some blue, you can touch in some red, like you can, red and green makes black. So if you wanted to get it really dark, I don't think I would want this to get super dark back here because I think the darkest parts should be on the sheep's face. So let's make um, a light green, which I just added some yellow to my mix of green that I already have. I'll make some more. See the horrible color of phthalo green before you natural make it natural so i have some middle middle green here and add some quinacridone burnt orange and this is like a nice pine color which is good i already have some of this brown here i have some purple so it'll be wet on dry because it's not a huge space to fill. But we'll do, we'll, we'll think of the Revolutionary War soldiers. We're not gonna go all the way across and then have to come back and do finish. We'll, we'll put, make the soldiers go across this field in a row so they all stay alive. I love that little story. So, but we won't make the so they they will have little they will have little tops to their trees because they're or they could be you know they don't have to whatever shape you want the top to be maybe it'll be sometimes pointy sometimes not um i did say we were going to go across in a row but i don't want the whole thing to be green so i'm going to come back underneath here with a little bit of purple and then a little bit of light green and a little bit of yellow green and over here so i have to just bring them all together forward in line together. And when you add colors, they mix together and do neat things. Like right now, maybe it's gonna 
bloom up into the color sort of so and and that's good like i want things to happen watercolor things to happen during this because that's the beauty of it now i have a little bit of brown over here i'll add that why not just a little touch of it and it kind of glows through this is that really dark black kind of color. I'm just going to add a little tiny bit there. See what happens. I just keep rinsing my brush and getting a new color. And I'm thinking of the, the top here, making little tree shapes across the top. I don't really want to overlap onto my grass because that'll create a line on the edge, which I'm, I have that. And I can scrub that off at the very end when it's dry. But I'm going to try to just go right next to it and not on top of it. It's that same, same scenario if you had two pieces of stained glass and you put one on top of the other. It makes a line. It, may, it shows through. So here I'll add a little more purple. I want behind I want behind the sheep to be kind of dark here. Well, I mean it's you don't want to get only dark here. You want it to be the same all the way across. So I'm just remembering now that I want it to be darker over here. This will make the sheep pop forward and be more important. But like I said, I don't want it to only be dark over here, so I have to come back, change the color around a little bit. There, I can get a little lighter and then a little darker, a little more yellow, a little more blue, different colors in your green. And I just keep changing. I just keep uh, cleaning the brush. Now I just have plain water because I'm just going to have a lot of paint on here right now. So I'm just going to drag the color across with just plain water. And you can always do that if you're not quite sure. And I can go over here with plain water like this and then come back and put color into it. Like, I haven't really put much blue in here. Maybe I need a little blue over here. And over here where it's still wet, so I can still add some. That looks nice, a little bit of blue. Just go around your sheep carefully. And I think I'll put a little purple over here since I want him to show up. I can make it a little bit darker in that spot. Where we are here is an opportunity to put some more darks in the sheep's faces. So I still have brown mixed on my palette. And I need to get my sheep over here. He has a, a sunlit, a light brown sunlit ear right there. The center of interest is where your darkest and your lightest meet. So the center of interest is pretty much right here, these two sheep, because it's the lightest of the painting and the, and the darkest of the painting. Find your darkest parts of your sheep now and when you and you don't have to put super dark color now it's one more layer one more layer is going to double the darkness of of what's there so it's just one more layer of the same brown you had before will make it much darker and then use clear water and make it a little bit lighter on this side of his leg i mean this is something a small, small detail, but it helps make his leg look round 
-hmm. And if, it, if you get too dark, you just wipe off your brush on a towel and lift it a little bit as you go. So I just lightened it. I made it darker and then I made it lighter. And that's like, I already covered up all those little funny spots that I didn't like before. And it just with one slight, small, slight wash of color, you can just smooth anything out. And I think he's just a little darker over here. I put a little darkness there and then I just take clear water and bring it around. It's really teeny tiny little spaces to make darker. Like you said, it's pretty fast because it's not a huge area to fill up, but it's an important area because it's the center of attention. Any animal's face is probably like the most important thing. You can see in the picture, it's kind of darker in front of him. What something to differentiate what's in front of him and what's behind him. These guys have like a shadow in front of them, but I kind of like it better. Like in my painting that I did, to make the shadow, the darker be behind him, behind the, that tufts of grass. So I don't want to put like a whole different color in or something, but so I'll just put in a little bit darker orange back here. And I'm also making some more prominent grasses as I'm doing it. So I put in a little bit of color and then I wipe, I clean my brush off and I just take a, a clean brush and drag it around a little bit. So I, I want, and I clean my brush off again and I come back up here and, cause I want it to be soft flowing into the background and that's too much. So I just splash too much water on here. So you just always have a paper towel handy. I got too much paint here. Oh, I think I touched the sheep's face and that, oh, there I touched his ear. So I'm just gonna take my paper towel and blop the whole thing up there. I can go back and put more dark in his ear later if I need to. So I have a little bit of a negative painting. Um, grasses. Probably wait to do this part here because he's still a little bit wet, but I could do over here you see if I do that? I can go over here on this side of him and do some. So I'm going to make, it's not a dark color I have. It's just another layer on top, which makes it darker. And then I'll just touch a little bit darker over here. So I'm just making one place of it place a little bit darker. And then there's some green up here. So I can make a little bit of it green. And now that's enough for me. So I'll just take a clean brush and let the rest of it flow into nothing like that. So I have a little bit of a negative painting of grasses. And you don't want to mess with it too much. I always have to tell, remind myself to stop because honestly, stopping soon after putting the paint down is the best thing because you can always come back when it's dry and do something else and fix it if you need to. That looks too much of a bloom. It's dry right now. I might as well show you how to do it. I'll take a clean, so I have a clean brush it's a clean brush. It's kind of a stiff, a little bit stiff, not too stiff, but it's clean and now it's thirsty. So it's wet, but dried off. And then I can just scrub, sort of scrub a little bit. And every time you do that, you have to clean it off again, because when you do this, the paint is going onto your brush. So if you scrub it without cleaning it every few seconds, you're just putting the same paint right back down again. 
So I'm scrubbing that. And it's not like scrubbing like a floor. It's really gentle, but it's lifting. So now I can just let it dry and show you I fixed it. It just looks like foliage now, not a watercolor bloom. I want everybody to know that when you see something wrong, don't touch it while it's wet. That's the, that's really, I've learned, I learned that the hard way. I wrecked a lot of paintings by trying to fix them while they're still wet. Samantha, do you do workshops and, and classes in addition to all your other roles in life? Yeah, I do classes on Wednesdays and Fridays. It's on my website, okay. um, samanthamcnally.com.